All right, so this is uh, Steve Ward's SST C circuit. Got this GDT here. This is my janky half bridge setup. Um, first test setup, so it's, it's just wired that way. So cannot change the MOSFETs out easy. Hopefully, uh, all this extra strain inductance and what and uh, whatnot won't make a huge difference just to get it working. This this um, little hex inverter down here likes to pick up the uh, 60 hertz signal coming off nearby electronics, and that's causing the gate drivers to constantly run <clears throat> at 60 hertz. So if I hold this, this would normally be the feedback antenna. It's just a little wire right here. And as long as I hold it up in the air, you see I start to get this 60 hertz square wave right now I've just got this little um, transformer here just to sort of test uh, what, my, what my output is and you can see you know it's picking it up it doesn't always get it it helps if I grab onto it um, but even just dangling as just a wire right there just a little antenna by itself it, it picks it up in a lot of places it doesn't really need my body you know the the the, co the Tesla coil itself also sort of works as an antenna. The supply voltage I'm feeding right now is currently just this DC supply. It's, it's at 30 volts. That's also current limited. But at the moment, it doesn't pull a whole lot of current at all. Um, and like I say, what I've noticed is, say if I put this little test antenna right here, and then I cut it on, then it'll start up and it is now oscillating now you can see the little gate drivers are pushing a little more juice now so they are driving this transformer <clears throat> but you see it's not not a lot of power it's very low power um, can pull the tiniest little arc off there no top load at the moment you know, very very weak, very unimpressive. But I noticed that what it's doing right now is it's oscillating at one and a half megahertz. So this must be a resonant frequency of this coil. It wants to initially, with the way that antenna is, lock into this particular resonant frequency range, you could say, and run there. Um, but let's just say I. This is the old circuit that was driving this as a Slayer exciter. I've just left it on there, minus the connections. So if I take this antenna and move it around, it it changes the circuit around a little bit. But if I take it and just sort of touch it to uh, a little heat sink there, then I start to get a little breakout up top. And then I have enough juice to, you know, give that little effect like, you know. Uh, but anyway, now you can see, now it's oscillating closer to 700 kilohertz. So I would imagine this is just another resonant frequency range that it wants to oscillate in and getting it to actually uh, kick into a higher gear, let's say, would be a matter of just playing around with the um, antenna, filtering, the GDT, all of that stuff I would imagine uh, would play a role there. Alright, so... I've swapped out this GDT with this one. Here's here's the bottom of my secondary. It's not grounded uh, because at the moment when I do ground it out, it just kills the uh, antenna's ability to pick up what's going on. Another thing is I've got a lot of noise around here. This is probably the worst spot to be testing this out. Little decent little arcs. There is some juice in them. There's some juice in them. So rectified mains at 170, almost double that. Would so would be alright, but it's not. It wouldn't be uh, quite what I'd expect. So here's a 120 volt uh, full bridge <coughs> rectified and smooth uh, DC ramped up with a triac dimmer. That there. 
so we're at 21 volts. That's about where it was before. And all the way up. Woo! You can kind of see what happened there. The bottom of the secondary sort of caught fire there, um, arcing to this metal here. And then at some point when it did that, it really sent a huge <laughs> amount of feedback um, and drove the circuit real hard so I'm hoping that didn't uh, destroy it so see what happens when we uh, cut it back up oh, now it's wanting to burn the wood yep hold on Good old electrical tape. So I got that separated. So I'm gonna cut it back up. 22 volts. 100. So that's all the way up. 132 volts or thereabouts from the triac. So, you know, nothing crazy there, but still ungrounded uh, secondary. But I do know now that um, at that voltage, about 130 or so, uh, according to this meter, uh, so long as somehow I figure out how to, uh, I guess, recreate what happened there with the feedback, because um, it immediately kicked it into overdrive, and that thing was spitting out like crazy. Um, so, I'm pretty sure that means with this setup, it will work how it's supposed to at main volt mains voltage, even just with this primary and this coil here with just that random uh, top load. So, the whole antenna is the deal. I need to read up on that, I guess, maybe get some input, but figuring that out seems to be the the trick now and then after that you know I, I guess I still need to figure out how to uh, adjust the on time I guess I'm just going to try uh, building Steve's circuit and see how that actually works but I, I don't actually think it's going to do anything so it ends up being about 640 kilohertz this thing wants to uh, ring it and still same deal this time I've got the bottom of the secondary rather than grounded I've just kept it from uh, having a breakout point so hopefully it will uh, increase the signal this little antennas picking up and drive a little harder but cut that up so the lowest the uh, triac will go with the caps on there which will slowly charge up it's about a uh, 22 volts and then I'll bring it to about a hundred that's decent arcs <clears throat> then bump it all the way up it could do better without having to crank the voltage and really hard to tell uh, what type of juice it's pulling but it doesn't seem like it's really pulling anything um, and I say that because I know with 100 volts it was hardly pulling so I don't know that's pretty cool so I'm already happy with uh, 
be able to pull those kind of arcs for the power but obviously you know I had to crank the voltage way up to get there but I would imagine using my low voltage setups to be able to achieve that at you know under 50 volts man I'd really have to crank the amps in there so I'd be pushing easily over 300 watts probably to match that at, at the low voltage so